Thanks for selecting one of our TaxSlayer Pro training videos. In this video, we're going to prepare an early season simple tax return. We're going to mark our client head of household filing status. Our client has a dependent with daycare expenses. Our client also qualifies for the earned income credit. And we're going to mark the return for electronic filing. I'm here at the main screen of the TaxSlayer program and I've got three options in which to start a tax return from this main screen. I can click on the Tax Returns button. I can click on number one, Tax Returns, or if my hands are on the keyboard, I can simply enter number one here in the Enter Option dialog box. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and click on the Tax Returns button. This is going to open up the Consent to Use, the 7216 Consent to Use question. Do I want to print the Consent to Use now? For this example, I'm just going to go ahead and click No. Now, once I've answered No to that 7216 question, the program takes me to my client list. And I can sort this client list according to these headings, either by last name or by social security number, simply by clicking on the heading. I can sort by social, or I like mine sorted by last name so they're easy to find. But now the program has asked me to go ahead and enter my taxpayer social security number to start a new return. So I'm going to click in this field. I'm going to enter my client's social security number. Press the enter key. And I'm asked, do I wish to create a new return? Well, I'm going to answer yes for this client. But if I were a TaxSlayer Pro user last year and this client had come to me last year to do the 2014 return, the question would be a little bit different. The program would ask if I wish to pull the personal information forward from the 2014 program for this client. But for this video, we're going to say that this is a new client and I'm going to answer yes to the question, I wish to create a new return. Next, we're asked to select the filing status for our client. Now, what we're doing, the first part of the program is an interview process. Imagine if you had a 1040 laying on your desk. I'm at the top portion of the 1040 now. I filled in my client's social security number. I'm now going to select the filing status for my client. And as we said earlier, client is a head of household, so I'm going to select that filing status, and now I'm asked to enter my client's personal information. So I'm going to enter my client's name, social security number, date of birth, and address. Notice when I fill in the zip code, the city and the state information will automatically fill. I'm going to go ahead and enter two phone numbers for my client. And I'm going to capture an email address in case I need to send my client uh, PDF copies of his return or, or uh, email correspondence to my client later on. Click the OK button and I'm now at what we call a pause to refresh screen. I can take a look at this information, make sure that everything has been entered correctly and I especially want to make sure that that social security number is correct for my client. I don't want that return to reject because of an incorrect social security number and I also want to check the spelling on that last name, make sure that that's correct as well. Once I leave my pause to refresh screen, I'm now asked if I wish to enter dependents, and I do. Remember, our client is head of household, so I'm going to answer yes to this question. I want to enter dependents information. Once I do that, I'm presented with a little dialog box. Now, you'll see this dialog box, this particular style of dialog box, sprinkled throughout the desktop program with these buttons down below, New, Edit, Delete, Other, and Exit. I'm going to click on the New button. And here, I'm going to go ahead and enter my dependents information, first name, last name, date of birth, social, and so on. 
Now notice here, if my dependent's last name is the same as the taxpayer, I can save myself some keystrokes and simply hit the enter key and it will automatically fill in the last name for my dependent. relationship, I can select the drop down, select Sun, but notice we have other choices here in the drop down menu, and the number of months that the dependent lived with the taxpayer. I'm going to go ahead and select 12 months, but notice we also have some drop down options in this dialog as well. I'm going to select the OK button and the program has recognized that because of my dependent's age that he may qualify for dependent care expenses, the dependent care credit. We're going to say for this particular example that my dependent does qualify for dependent care expenses so I'm going to go ahead and enter an amount there. Once I press the enter key again I'm asked to review the information for my dependent Make sure that everything is correct. I'm going to exit. And now I'm back at the dialog box where I originally began. If I needed to enter another dependent, I would simply click the new button. Or if I needed to edit Jeremy's information, I would select Jeremy and hit the edit button. But for this particular case, I'm just going to go ahead and exit. We'll just say our client has only one dependent. Now because I've entered an amount for a daycare provider, the program asks me would I like to enter my child care provider information for my dependent care expenses. I'm going to go ahead and answer yes to that question. Again, here's that familiar little dialog box. I'm going to go ahead and click new and I'm going to enter my provider's ID number, the name of my provider, the address and so forth. I've got my provider's employer identification number entered. I'll enter the name of the provider and the address. And once again, when I enter the zip code, the city and the state will automatically fill. And I'm asked to re-enter the amount paid for child care and I want to make sure that those two amounts match up. Click the OK. Again, I can review the information that I entered for Sunshine House, make sure the amount paid is correct. I could enter a phone number if required. A state tax ID is required for returns done in Hawaii. I'm going to go ahead and exit this menu. Again, if I had another daycare provider I would click the new button if I needed to edit the information for Sunshine House. I would highlight Sunshine House and click the edit button. But for my example, I'm going to go ahead and exit this menu. Now I'm asked to enter my preparer code. My preparer code number is set up in configuration. The program recognizes me, tells me to have an excellent Tuesday. I'm going to click OK. Now we're getting into the Affordable Care Act questions. Now we're going to go into the Affordable Care Act into more detail in a later video, but for this return we're going to say that my client did have minimum essential health care coverage for all of 2015, so I'm going to answer yes to that question. And we're going to say that this client did not enroll in health insurance through the marketplace. So I'm going to answer no to that question. Here's another pause to refresh screen. I can review this information if I needed to change or correct the name and address, dependent information, filing status, any of those changes that need to be made I would simply click on those menu items and make the necessary changes. And notice Full year minimum essential health care coverage has been answered yes. Health insurance through the marketplace, I've answered no. So I'm going to exit this menu. 
the program now asks me if I want to enter my client's W-2 information. I'm going to go ahead and answer yes to that question. Again, the dialog box, that's the kickoff to the W-2 screen. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the new button. Here's my W-2 entry screen and I'm going to go ahead and enter the information from my client's W-2. Now notice the information for my client's employer filled in. The program remembered an employer ID number from a previous W-2. I have a button here that I can click on employers program will store employer information for me so that I don't have to type that employer information each time. It will remember and automatically fill from the W-2 EIN. So now all I need to do is select box 1 for my client's wages and the federal tax withheld. The Social Security wages and the Social Security tax withheld, Medicare wages and Medicare tax withheld automatically calculate and automatically fill. Now, of course, if any of these figures were different on my client's W-2, all I would need to do is click into that field, make the necessary changes, hit the enter key, and move out of that field. I'm going to move down to the state drop-down. Let's say my client lives and works in Georgia. And again, the state ID was recalled because the employer ID number is stored in memory. The employer name is stored in memory from a previous W-2. The program automatically pulls the wages down into the state area. So all I need to do is fill out the tax withheld on my client's W-2 for the state of Georgia. Once all this information is correct and I've reviewed the W-2, I can hit the enter key and leave this W-2 screen. Again, if my client had another W-2, I would click on the New button. If I needed to edit the information for this W-2, I would highlight it, click the Edit button. For my client's uh, situation here, he only has one W-2, so I'm going to go ahead and exit. I'm now at the Income menu. It's at this point that I would want to ask my client do you have any other income from any other source? At that point, I would enter any other income that my client might have had in this menu here. For our example, we'll say our client only had the one W-2, so I'm going to exit the income menu. Now once I exit the income menu, the program automatically recognizes that because of my client's income level, the fact that he's head of household and has a dependent, that my client might possibly qualify for the Earned Income Tax Credit or EIC. So the program will present me with the Form 8867, the EIC checklist menu, the due diligence menu. Anytime that I see must answer, I must access those menu options and satisfy the requirements that are contained in those menu options. So we'll start off with number one, questions for all taxpayers. If I click there, I'm presented with the due diligence questions or the beginning. And notice here, I could press the F8 key at any time on my keyboard to enter notes as I interview my client for uh, due diligence for the 8867 and the earned income credit checklist. Now I've gone ahead and filled in some notes so that we can move on through the program. I'm going to click the OK button there. The first question I see was the taxpayer a non-resident alien for any part of the year? I'm going to answer that question no. Is the taxpayer a qualifying child of another person? I'm going to answer that question no. Did you complete the 8867 based on current information provided by the taxpayer? I'm going to answer yes to that question. Did you ask this taxpayer any additional questions that are necessary to meet the knowledge requirement? And the, probably the most important sentence in, this, in these three paragraphs here, you cannot rely on the software alone to meet your due diligence requirements. You must have a complete understanding of the law and comply with the knowledge requirements. 
I'm going to answer that question yes. Did we document the additional questions I asked and my client's answers? I'm going to answer yes to that question. We have some notes in there. Did the taxpayer and or spouse provide you with the information necessary to answer those questions? I'm going to answer yes. It was done through a taxpayer or client interview. And so now, option number one, instead of must answer, it has changed to qualifies. So now we have a dependent child on the return and I need to move on to part two. Does Jeremy qualify another person for EIC? I'm going to answer that question no. We got out pretty easy on that one. We only had to answer one question for the dependent child. And now I need to substantiate the residency of the qualifying child. So I'm going to click on must answer. And we'll say that we used school records or statements to verify Jeremy's residency. So I'm going to put a check in that box. Click OK. The IRS requires the prepare to keep a copy of any documents they saw that they relied on for purposes of determining the eligibility for or the amount of the earned income tax credit. I'm going to click OK on that question. And so now we've satisfied all of the due diligence questions. I'm going to exit this menu. I'm going to exit the EIC information edit screen. And I'm now at the 1040 screen. Now from the 1040 screen, if I needed to make any changes to the client's information, I could simply click on the line of the 1040 take me to the program menu that I need to access to make any changes to that client's information. If I needed to add income or change the W-2, anything of that nature, I would simply click on the line on the 1040 and it takes me to the menu option in the program to make those changes. What I'm going to do now though, we're going to say that this client's return is pretty well wrapped up in the W-2, we put in the dependent information, the daycare information. On the 1040 screen, the program displays my client's potential federal refund. And now I'm going to take care of marking the return for electronic filing. The only place in the program that I can do that is this menu option right here, Mark Return Electronic. So once I click that menu option, number 12, Mark Return Electronic. I have some choices. My client's receiving a refund, so I can either choose a direct deposit to my client's checking or savings account, or I can choose the option for an electronic mail check, which means I'm electronically filing the return, and my client will receive the check in the mail from the IRS for his refund. And just to make things simple, I'm going to choose option number two, electronic mail check, just so we don't have to enter any routing transit numbers and account numbers. I'm going to hit OK on that option. And I'm now at the practitioner pin menu. The taxpayer's pin has automatically been entered by the program. We simply stick the number one in front of the last four digits of the taxpayer's social security number. The ERO's pin was previously entered into the configuration setup. The electronic return originator has entered the taxpayer's PIN and lists our signature date, so I'm now going to exit this menu. I'm now asked if I want to view or print the IRS e-file signature authorization form. Again, if this were a real return, I would definitely want to do that at this point, have the taxpayer sign the 8879, the signature authorization, but for our purposes here, I'm just going to select no. I now have a choice in the e-file menu if for some reason I wanted to change the return type from an electronic mail check to a direct deposit. I could simply click on that menu option and make that change. I could also remove the client's return from e-file if necessary at this point. I'm going to exit the e-file menu. And now I'm going to take care of the state return while I'm back in the on the client's 1040 screen. And to do that, I'm going to click on option number 10, state return. And just as in 
this option number 12 to mark the return electronic, option number 10 is the only spot in the program, in the desktop program, to access the state menu. So I'm going to click on option number 10 here on the main 1040 screen. I'm reminded to ensure that any addbacks or subtractions, uh, particularly bonus depreciation, things of that nature, are correct before I finalize the state return. And this is the state menu lists all 46 states that have some sort of a state income tax and our client lived and worked in Georgia so I'm going to select number 11 Georgia click OK now most every state return going into the state will have a choice for resident part year or non-resident return I'm going to select Georgia resident and basically with one mouse click the Georgia return is complete. The state programs will pull the federal information into the state, do the calculations, and we notice for our client here he's got a refund of $238. So the next thing I want to do is mark the state return for electronic filing. Now a little sidebar here, I cannot mark the state for electronic filing until I mark the federal for electronic filing. Keep, keep that in mind. So I'm going to select option 14 here, electronic information menu. I'm asked, do I want to file this Georgia State return electronically? Yes, I do. And again, just as on the federal side, if I wanted to change from an electronic mail check to direct deposit, I could do that. I'm going to exit the electronic menu. I've marked that state return for electronic filing now. The program asks, am I ready to print Georgia Form 8453? Some states will require you to print an 8453, the signature authorization, have your client sign it, keep it on file. For our practice return here, I'm just going to answer no. And now I'm going to exit the state return, exit the state menu. I'm back at the 1040 screen. I've completed the federal return, I've completed the state return, I've marked both for electronic filing, so I can pretty much wrap up this return, hit the exit button, exit the receipt menu, and I'm asked if I'm ready to mark the return as complete and ready for transmission. Now what this question means is the return will simply be sent to the transmission table. The return has not been electronically filed yet. If my client gets home and he realizes that he forgot to give me a piece of information, maybe he received another W-2 in the mail, I can still change the return. Of course, as long as we do that before we electronically file the return and it gets accepted. But the point is, if I answer this question, yes. It simply moves the return to the transmission table, does not lock it down from further changes and the return will stay in the transmission table until I actually go through the e-file process and send it to the IRS. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this return yes and I'm back at the main menu. Here I can go ahead and start another tax return if I have other people in the office waiting to have their returns done. So in other words I can send a batch of electronically filed returns later on in the evening or I could go ahead and e-file this particular client's return. Now we cover the electronic filing process in another brief video but just to give you a hint this is where we'll begin. We want to thank you for watching this TaxSlayer Pro training video and we'll see you in the next video.